The Liberal government has also today tabled legislation aimed at making it easier for humanitarian groups to deliver aid to Afghanistan. Amendments to the terrorism provisions of the criminal code were proposed so groups in Canada could get urgent supplies and aid to people in Afghanistan. Sarah Galashin is here with more on that story. So, Sarah, tell us what this is all about. So, Hannah, last year the Canadian government uh, announced $143 million in humanitarian aid to Afghanistan. Uh, that's last year alone. Uh, but the problem is those Canadian dollars are uh, subject to Canadian law, to the Canadian Criminal Code, uh, which makes it illegal to uh, finance a terrorist organization. And the Taliban is, of course, designated as such. And that means that uh, doing things like paying taxes to the Taliban by hiring locals within Afghanistan or, or purchasing seeing goods that's actually uh, falls into the category of illegal. It violates Canadian law. So that's why they have tabled Bill C-41, not to change the criminal code, but uh, to be able to amend it, which would then allow the Canadian gov government to make exceptions. And the Justice Minister at the press conference earlier today, he summed it up nicely, so I want to play his quote. What we now allow is for a, a group in this room uh, to apply uh, to the Minister of Public Safety to describe the kinds of activities they want to participate in. And so within the scope of, of those activities, they will be, uh, they will be shielded from, uh, from liability under the Criminal Code. So it's as flexible as the groups in this room need it to be. And, and, and it allows us the flexibility, uh, again, to allow them to do their good work. Some of the activities that they could make exceptions for would be uh, humanitarian assistance, uh, health mm -hmm. services, human rights programming, and uh, the need they, they illustrate pre illustrated pretty quickly, uh, citing uh, predictions that uh, some two thirds of people who are living in Afghanistan are going to be requiring or relying on international aid in order to survive this year, Hannah. Wow. Uh, we are going to talk with the CEO of Save the Children Canada in just a moment. But what are you hearing from aid organizations? Well, uh, that aid organization likely uh, amongst a large group of them that have been calling for uh, this change, this kind of um, consideration to, to come into play, certainly since August 2021, when the Taliban took over uh, ruling Afghanistan. And subsequently, um, we saw the, the you know, exit of international uh, aid uh, that was coming into that country, it, it left because of the fact that the Taliban uh, took over. The resulting poverty and hardships really can't be uh, understated, uh, especially when you consider the fact that this is a country that has suffered decades of war, uh, climate crisis, drought. Uh, we did also speak earlier on News Network with the president of World Vision, uh, who talked about this, saying that he's receptive uh, to the fact that it's happening and that it is a long time in coming. I want to play what he said. Now, it has taken time. We, of course, have been calling for this for for, for uh, since the, the start, uh, I remember in the early days, we had to stop a delivery of, of ready to use therapeutic food, which is needed for the most vulnerable, most malnourished children uh, from Canada. It couldn't go up there because of the, the terrorism pr provisions. But we're encouraged that this step will be a way for us to find ways to get a humanitarian exemption. Uh, an approach is, is really critical. Other G7 countries have already made this move uh, upon calls coming from aid organizations. And I just have to point out, of course, this is a bill, so it still has to pass. Hannah? Okay. Sarah Galashin, thank you for the latest on this. You bet. And we're going to continue on with this story. As I mentioned, we are going to speak with the CEO and president of Save the Children Canada, Danny Glenwright, and joins us from Ottawa. Welcome to the program, sir. Hi, Hannah. Good to be with you. Yeah, I, I really want to get to how this change will practically affect people on the ground in Afghanistan. Well, this is just a critical first step, Hannah. And as my colleague Michael said, you know, we've been waiting for this for some time. What we really need now is to see some speed. We need to get this moving forward and, and so that we can continue to implement the critical life-saving assistance that we need and is needed on the ground right now. So for an agency like Save the Children, we haven't stopped working in Afghanistan because we've got support there from many countries and many donors all over the world. And as your uh, colleague said, you know, Canada is one of the last countries to bring in this carve out. So we've been able to continue to support Afghans, 
But as she also noted, you know, two thirds of the country right now in need of critical support just to stay alive. So there's tons of work to do. So what this means for us is as soon as we can get that aid out the door, we can buttress that good work that's going on right now in Afghanistan. And so it's a great first step. We're waiting now for it to be passed so we can get moving. Yeah, and there was a problem last year because of this. I remember talking about, I think, it, I can't remember dates, it goes by so fast, but there was a problem getting aid to people in Afghanistan because Canada classifies the Taliban as, um, uh, as a terrorist entity, and there wasn't this carve-out. That's right. And Canada, like all G7 countries, like the UK and Australia and others, classifies the Taliban as a terrorist group. But those countries moved much faster to get uh, this carve out done. We're thrilled that this has happened today because what it means is all those sort of bureaucratic challenges that we face in delivering aid to these who, those who need it really the most right now. We can remove some of those and Canada can join its partners and its allies and, and agencies like Save the Children can continue to work and continue to bring aid to those that need it the most. And this is critically important too. And you know, we were really happy to see today sort of the broad based nature of this bill, because this bill also allows us, as you just noted, to continue the development support that Canada has been providing in Afghanistan for decades. This goes all the way back to the Millennium Development Goals to past Canadian governments. We were really critical in supporting maternal and child mortality reductions there. And this bill allows us to sort of shore up those development gains as well as respond to the life-saving needs that Afghans are facing right now. Just get into that a bit more. How does the bill allow it? Well, it means that we can we can actually feasibly work in the country that we're, as you said off the top, we're able to purchase things, we're able to procure services, we're able to pay our Afghan colleagues. Uh, all of those things have been impossible right now because of the fact that it's a Taliban government in Afghanistan. So it, 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 in practical terms, it means that Canadian agencies can take support from generous donors here in Canada, whether it's individual Canadians who care about Afghans or our government, and we can make that uh, those dollars actually stretch in Afghanistan and provide the support we need. And we can join other donors from around the world in delivering that support. So our work hasn't stopped, but now we can we can bolster that work with funds from Canada where we weren't before. And I hope that there's a swift passage of this bill. We saw today cross party support on this. It was a cross government effort. So we are hopeful that there will not be any more delays. It's winter now in Afghanistan as it is here. There's critical need. And Hannah, today I'm thinking about those young girls and women, you know, those young mothers in Afghanistan who are looking at their daughters and saying, do I have to marry off some of these girls young because I can't afford to feed them all? And that's what I hope that all parliamentarians and Canadians are thinking about today. This has practical implications for children and for young moms on the ground in Afghanistan. So the sooner we can pass it, the better. Now, I'm going to ask maybe a dumb question. <laughs> I'm sorry if it is to you. Save the Children is currently not on the ground in Afghanistan, correct? No, Save the Children, we are on the ground in Afghanistan. We're working in a number of parts of Afghanistan. As I said, we have support at Save the Children. Yeah. We're an international organization. We've got support from all over the world. So we're, we're working there now, but just not with Canadian funds. And then, not with Canadian funds, and that could potentially change and, you know, What's the time frame you're hoping in the back of your mind? You just talk about how important it is to get this bill passed. It seems like all uh, uh, all uh, parliamentarians should agree with it. But how quickly do you think that that can work through? You know, I, what we're hoping is that this these funds can be flowing into Afghanistan from donors in Canada this spring. I was hoping for sooner because it's winter and the, the challenges that people are facing there are acute right now. But if we can get these funds flowing, you know, by April uh, at, at the, you know, at the latest, I think, you know, we can really buttress a lot of the good work that agencies like Save the Children are doing there right now with funds from many other parts of the world. April, what's your first plan of action? A first plan of action, you know, we've been speaking to our stakeholders on the ground. So that's the local agencies with whom we work. That's, you know, the people in the Afghan people that we work with as well as our colleagues on the ground. And what we're going to do is listen to them and say, where do you need support the most? Where does funding from Canada make the biggest bang for its buck? 
And we have a long history here in Canada with our feminist international assistance policy, with our work towards those those goals, uh, the sustainable development goals around young children and, and women. I think that's where we're going to have funds from Canada make a big difference because we have always focused uh, because of that policy on getting those funds to health care for girls, for gender programming for women. So I think that's where we're going to make a difference in Afghanistan as soon as we can get those funds there. And as you know, that's where the crisis is because of some of the Taliban policies around women and girls, which are frankly, I think one of the ministers today called it gender apartheid, and that's what it is. So we're yeah. going to make a difference where we can. Absolutely. Everything just reversed once the Taliban took over. Uh, Danny Glenwright, thank you for your insights and come back anytime to give us an update on this for sure. My pleasure. Thanks for your interest in the story. Danny Glenwright is the president and CEO of Save the Children Canada, joined us from Ottawa.